All right, I'm recording. Gosh, my ear sucks. Okay, I thought. But yeah, so yesterday I finished the fractions, and now we're going to decimals. Let's go, let's go. Bring it to decimals. Learn. This whole place value. Let's go, Sal. So I have a number written here. It's a two, a three, and a five. And we already have some experience with numbers like this. We can think about what does it represent. And to think about that, we just have to look at the actual place values. So this rightmost ones. place right over here, this is the ones place. So ones. this five represents five uh, yeah. ones. Or I guess you could say that's just going to be five. This three, this is in the tens place. This is in the tens place. So we have three tens. tens. So that's three just tens. going to be 30. And the two. The two is in the hundreds place. So okay. putting a two there, two is in the hundreds the place. So putting a two there means that we have two hundreds. So this number we can view as 235. Yeah. Or you could view it as 200 plus 30 plus 5. Now what I want to do in this video is think about place values to the right of the ones place. And you might say, wait, wait, I always thought that the ones place was the place furthest to the right. Well, everything that we've done so far, it has been. But to show that you can go even further to the right, I'm going to put a little dot. I'm going to put a little dot right over here. And we call that a decimal point. And that dot means that anything to the right of this is going to be place values that are smaller, I guess you could say, than the ones place. So right to the left, you have the ones place and the tens place and the hundreds place. And if you were to keep going, you'd go to the thousands place and the ten thousands place. But then if you go to the right of the decimal point, now you're going to divide by 10. So what am I talking about? Well, right to the right of the decimal point, you are going to have, find a new color. No, this is going to be the tenth place. This is what? going to be the tenth place. Well, what does that mean? Well, if whatever number I write here, that, that tells us how many tenths we're dealing with. So if I were to write the number, if I were to write the number four right over here, now my number is two hundreds plus three tens plus five ones plus four tenths. So I you could view this as four no, times like one tenth. Four ones or, or something. you could write this as four tenths, not tens, four tenths. Or four tenths is the same thing as as this right over here. So this is a super important idea in oh, mathematics. Wow. I can now use our place values to represent fractions. So this right over here, this 0.4, this is 4 tenths. So another way to write this number, I could write it this way. I could write it as 200, four over 200, wow. 30, let me do the 30 in blue, 200 and 30, 235, and 4 tenths. So I could write it like this as a mixed number. So this up here would be a decimal representation, 235.4. And this right over here would be a mixed number representation, 235 and 4 tenths. But they all represent 200 plus 30 plus 5 plus 4 tenths. Let's look at a few more examples of this. So let's say I were to write the number. Let's say I were to write the number 0, 0 0.7. And actually, let me go one space even further to the right, 0 0.76. So what would this be if I were to write it as a fraction? So let's just think about the place value. We have our decimal point. To the left of the decimal point is the ones place. But I have a 0 there, so this is 0 ones. Now I have 7 tenths, so this is the tenths place. Can you explain why and then this is going like to be this place to the right of that. Ones. That's going to be that's going to be that's going to we're going to divide by that's ten again. So this is going to be the hundredths word, place. You guys know what I mean. Let me write this now. This space right over here is going to be the hundredths, the hundredths place. So this number right over oh, here is we can rewrite it as one. zero. Let me write it this way. We could rewrite it as zero ones. Zero ones plus seven tenths plus seven tenths, not tens, tenths plus tenths. six hundredths. Six hundredths plus six hundredths, not hundreds, hundredths. Or we could write this as zero plus, plus seven over ten plus 
Seven tenths. Seven tenths. Write plus a little bit neater. Plus seven tenths. Six plus six hundredths. Plus six hundredths. Six over one hundred. So you could write this seven tenths plus six oh, six hundredths is exactly what this is. You could say this is zero ones, seven tenths, and six hundredths. Now another way we could write this, you might be tempted. Well, look, if we wanted to write it as a fraction or uh, talk about it as a fraction, I, I I could ignore the zero. That's not going to change the value of the sum. But I could add the seven tenths to the six hundredths. So how could I write seven tenths in in terms of hundredths? Well, same 7 over 10 is the same thing as 70, 70 over 100. 100. Is that 7 tenths is the same thing as 70 over 100. One way to think about it is if I have 10 times, if I multiply the denominator by 10, well, I can multiply the numerator by 10 as well and not change the value of it. 7 tenths is the same thing as 70 hundredths. And then you could add 6 hundredths to that. 6 hundredths to that. And what will that give you? Well, that's going to give you 76 hundredths. 76 hundredths. So this number up here, a lot of people will call this, you, they might say 0 0.76, or they might call this 76 hundredths. 76 hundredths. This is the hundredths place. This is the tenths place. But each tenth is worth 10 hundredths. And you see that. This is, this is you could either view this as 7 tenths, or you could view it as 70 hundredths. So this wow. is 76 hundredths. And you could keep going to the right. If you go to the right one more space, you would get to the thousandths place and then the ten thousandths place. So you keep dividing by 10 each place you go to the right and you multiply by 10 each place you go to the left. Whoa. That's a lot of videos. We are told to write seven hundredths as a fraction and a decimal. Why don't you get some paper and a pencil out and see if you can do that before we do it together. All right, so let's do it first as a fraction. So what is going to be the denominator of our fraction if they're saying 7 hundredths? And the way I'm saying it is a little bit of a hint. 7 hundredths. Oh, I think you got the picture. We're yep, dealing with hundredths. So our denominator is going to be 100. And then how many hundredths do we have? Well, we have seven of them. And I'll put that a different color just to be clear. We have so seven this, of those hundredths. Seven. So there you have it, seven hundredths. That's this expressed as a fraction. Now, what about as a decimal? Well, we could think about our decimal places. If, let's say that this is the ones place, and I'm just putting a little blank here. So it's ones place, and you have a decimal right over here. And then this would be the tenths place. And then this would be the hundredths place. Well, we have we want to represent seven hundredths. So let me be clear. This right over here is ones. This is tenths. And this is hundredths. I like saying it's unusually fun to say that. Hundredths. All right. Ones, tenths, hundredths. So how many ones do we have here? Well, we have no ones. No ones we have zero ones. How many tenths do we have? Yeah, here? No oh, we have no tenths. tenths. How many hundredths do we have? have well, we adults. have seven hundredths. Okay, now it's getting annoying. We have seven hundredths. So you could write it that way as well. And if I wanted to just write it a little bit cleaner, I could just write no ones, no tenths, and seven hundredths. I said it the last time like a like a normal person. Let's do another example. Here we're told select the written form of each number. And so they on the left right over here you have different representations here we have things written as a decimal, a fraction, another decimal, and then we want to say hey which of these are represented in words or a combination of numbers and words up here. So pause this video and, and have a go at this as well. Four tenths, four tenths, four hundred. Okay, so this first number right over here, we have no ones, and then as we go one space to the right of the decimal, this is the tenths place. And it's clear we have four of those tenths. So this right over here is four tenths. So that is this choice right here. So we would, I'll shade it in. If you're doing this on Khan Academy, you would just click there and it would fill in. So what about this one? Well, this one we would read. You have four out of ten, or four tenths. Am so this again would be four tenths. Okay. So we would shade Gosh, that sense. one in. Again, mm -hmm. would read. You have four out of ten, or so. What about this one? 
Well, this one we would read. You have four out of ten, or four, four tenths. tenths. So this again would be four tenths. So we would shade that one in. Now what's going on over here? We have no ones, we have no tenths, but we have four hundredths. I said it again, <laughs> it's too much fun. So we have four hundredths. So that's this column, so we would fill that one in. And we're done. Holy shit, that's a lot of videos, man. Let's say that I had the number 0 0.17. How could I say this number? Uh, I said it one way, I said 0 0.17, but what are other ways that I could say it, especially if I wanted to express it in terms hundreds? of tenths or hundredths or other places? And like always, try to pause the video and try to think about it on your own. All right, so there's actually a couple of ways that we could, we could uh, say this number. One, one is just to say 0 0.17. Other ways are to say, look, I have a one in the tenths place, so that's going to be one tenth, one tenth, and one tenth, and I have a seven in the hundredths place. So this is a seven right over here in the hundredths place. So I could say one tenth and seven hundredths. Un hundredths. And there you go. That's one way to say this number. Now another way to think about it is just say the whole thing in terms of hundredths. So a tenth is how many hundredths? Well, a tenth is the same uh, thing as ten hundredths. So you could say, uh, ten you could say instead of a tenth, you could say this is ten, ten hundredths. hundredths. And the way I'm writing it right now, very few people would actually do it this way. Ten hundredths and seven, and hundredths. seven hundredths. And seven hundredths. Well, now I could just add these hundredths. If I have ten hundredths and I have another seven hundredths, that's going to be seventeen hundredths. So I could just write this down as seventeen hundredths. Hundredths. And to make that intuition of how we could just call the seventeen hundredths instead of just calling it one tenth and seven hundredths, let's actually count by hundredths. So that is one hundredth, that is two hundredth. And actually, let me just go straight to nine hundredths. So I've skipped a bunch right over here. And what would be the next, how would I say ten hundredths? Well, ten hundredths, let me write it this way, ten hundredths is the same thing as one tenth. So if we go from nine hundredths, the next, if I'm counting by hundredths, the next one's going to be ten hundredths. Now, once again, ten hundredths is the same thing as one tenth. This is the same way that ten ones is the same thing as one ten. I hope that doesn't confuse you. But we could keep counting. Ten hundredths, eleven hundredths, twelve hundredths, thirteen hundredths, fourteen hundredths, fifteen hundredths, sixteen hundredths, and then finally seventeen hundredths. So hopefully that gives you a little intuition for why we can call this number, instead of just calling it 0 0.17 or 1 tenth and 7 hundredths, we could call this 17 hundredths. So with that out of the way, let's do a couple of examples going the other way. Let's say we're given a, a name of a number or the words and we want to write it down as a decimal. So this is 4 tens and 3 hundredths. All right, so 4 tens. So the 4 tens right over here. So actually, let me just put some places over here. So this would be, if this is our tens place, and then this is our ones place, and then you're gonna have your decimal, and then you're gonna have your tenths place, tenths place, and then you're going to have, and I'll this in a different color, your hundredths place, Hun hundredths place. So we're going to have four tens, not tenths, four tens. So four tens, zero ones, zero ones. We got our decimal. They don't have any tenths over here, so zero tenths. And then we have three hundredths, three hundredths. So three hundredths. So four tens, which is the same thing as forty, and three hundredths right over here. So forty point zero three. Let's do another one of these. This is kind of fun. Strangely so we have fun. Twenty four hundredths. 
2400. So by the logic that we saw in the first one, in the first one we could just write this as remember this would be 9 hundredths and if we went more one more hundredth this would be 10 hundredths. So if we want to do 24 hundredths it would just be 0 0.24. And if you're saying, "Well, wait, this looks like 2 tenths and 4 hundredths." You would be right. But remember, so actually let me I could rewrite this as I could rewrite this as 2 2 tenths 2 tenths and 4 hundredths. Let me say and 4 hundredths and drifts. But remember, a tenth is equal to 10 hundredths. So 2 tenths is the same thing as 20 hundredths. Hundredths. And trouble saying. So this is the same thing as 20 hundredths and 4 hundredths. And 4. Let me write it neatly. 4 hundredths. And of course, 20 hundredths and 4 hundredths is the same thing as 24 hundredths. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's say I have the number 905, 905 point zero well, we've made seven thousandths. four. That's hard so to how could I expand this out? What does this actually represent? So let's just think about five, each one, of the place values here. The nine right over thousands. here. This is in the hundreds place. Same. This literally represents nine hundreds. So we could rewrite that nine as nine hundreds, or let me, let me write it two ways. We could write it as nine hundred, which is the same thing as nine times one hundred. Now this is zero, that's just going to represent zero tens, but zero tens is still just zero, so we don't have to really worry about that. It's not adding any value to our expression or to our number. Now we have this five. This five is in the ones place. It literally represents five ones. Or you could just say it represents five. Now if we wanted to write it as five ones, we could say, well, that's going to be five times one. So, so far we've represented 905. 900 plus five, or nine times 100 plus five times one. And you might say, hey, how do I know whether I should multiply or add first? Should I do this addition before I do this multiplication? And I'll always remind you, order of operations in this scenario you would do your multiplication before you do your addition no. so you multiply your 5 times 1 and your 9 times 100 Never before adding these two things together but let's move on you have another zero this is zero is in the tenths place this is telling us the number of tenths we're going to have this is zero tenths so it's really not adding much now we or it's not adding anything now we go to the now we go to the hundredths place the hundredths place so this literally represents seven hundredths. So we could write this as seven hundredths or seven times one hundredth. So plus seven times one hundredth. And then finally we go to the thousandths place. So we go to the thousandths place and we have four thousandths. So that literally represents four over a thousand or four times a thousandth, four times a thousandth. Notice, this is coming from the hundreds place, this is coming from the hundreds place. You have zero tens, but I'll write the tens place there just so you see it, so it's zero tens, so I didn't even bother to write that down. Then you have your ones place, you have five ones, then you have zero tenths, so I didn't write that down. Then you have seven hundredths, seven hundredths, and then you have four thousandths, four thousandths. So, and we are done. We've written this out, really just understanding what this number represents. We're told that each square below represents one whole. So this square is a whole, this is another whole, so together that's two. And then we have something less than a whole. And they say what decimal is represented by the shaded area? So it's going to be two and then something. So it's going to be two point something. And let's think about what we have over here. This is one hole, two holes. And then over here, we've taken a hole and we've divided it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equal sections. So we've divided it into tenths. 
Each of these bars is equal to a tenth, and we have seven of them shaded in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is right. One, each of the eight, nine, ten equal sections. So we've divided it into tenths. Each of these bars is equal to a tenth, and we have seven of them shaded in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this right over here is seven tenths. So this is going to be one, two, and seven tenths. So if we wanted to write it as a mixed number, we'd write it as two and seven tenths. But they say what decimal is represented by the shaded area. So instead of writing two and seven tenths, we could write 2.7. Because the space immediately to the right of the decimal points, that's the tenths place. So we have two ones, two holes right over here. And then we have seven tenths. This is the tenths place. And we could check our answer, and we got it right. Let's do another one of these. So same thing. What decimal is represented by the shaded area? So we have three holes. And then this hole is divided into tenths. Now it's divided into these vertical bars. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten vertical bars. They're equal, so there it's divided into tenths. And we've shaded in five of them. So this one over here is five tenths. So it is three holes and five tenths. So it's going to be three holes. And in the tenths place, we would put five. 3.5, three holes and five tenths. We can check our answer. Got it right. Let's do a few more of these. What decimal is being represented by the shaded area? So over here, let's see. I have, I have 100 squares. You see I have, 10, I have 10 columns, and each of them have 10 squares in it. So 10 times 10 is 100. So I have 100 squares here, equal squares. So I've divided it into hundredths. And I've shaded in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of the hundredths. Hundredths. So how do I represent that? Zero so one, zero, zero that's the ones place. That's the tenths, tenths place. And now I'm in the hundredths place. And so this we have 9 of the hundredths shaded in. So this right over here would be 9 hundredths, which is exactly what we have there. All right, let's do let's do one more of these. All right, well, it's the same thing. We have two of the hundredths filled in. So I'll write zero point. If I did that, that would be two tenths. That's not what we have filled in. We have two hundredths, hundredths filled in. So this is zero point zero two, and we're done. We're told each big square below represents one whole. Express the shaded area as both a mixed number and a decimal. Whoa, so pause insane. this video and see if you can do that. What would this be as a mixed number, and then what would it be as a decimal? All right, now let's do it together. So let's first start with the mixed number. So we see that we have one hole here. The whole thing is filled out. So this is going to be one hole. And then over here, we have part of this second hole filled out. And it looks like we are dividing this hole into 10 equal sections. And then two of those are filled out. So as a mixed number, we have one. And then you have two of the tenths filled out. So this is going to be one and two tenths. And we're done. You can see here, this is split into tenths, and we filled in two of them. Now what about as a decimal? Well, we could just express one and two tenths as a decimal. We could say, hey, that's going to be one. And then we get to the tenths place. And then how many tenths do we have? We have two of them. So that's going to be 1.2. Let's do another example. So here, this is a little bit more involved. They say, once again, each big square below represents oh, one me. whole. And once again, they want us to express the shaded areas both a fraction and a decimal. So pause this video and have a go at this. All right, so let's start with a fraction again. So we have one hole, two holes, and then partially shaded in this third hole. So if I'm going to express this as a fraction, really it's going to be a mixed number. I would say that this over here, this is two holes. Now this third hole is only partially filled in. And we can see that it has been divided into hundredths. You can see it's a 10 by 10 grid. So each of these squares represent 1 hundredth of a hole. And how many of these hundredths are filled in? Well, you, let's see, you have 10, 20, 30, 
40, 50, 60, 70, and then you have 70, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that 74 of the hundredths are filled in. So as a mixed number, this whole thing would represent 2 and 74 hundredths. Now if we want to write it as a decimal, we would have two holes. And then we could go to the tenths place. You could just write 2 and 74 hundredths like that if you're pretty familiar with it. You could also think about it in terms of how many tenths and how many hundredths do you have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 tenths. And then we have four more hundredths beyond that. So you could think of it as 74 hundredths or 7 tenths and four hundredths. But either way, we are done. Either way, we're done. Oh, uh, crap. What we're going to do in oh, this goodness. video is refresh our understanding of place value, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper and think about place value in the context of decimals. So just as a refresher, if I had the number 973, this should be review for you. We already know that this rightmost space right over here, it's this is the ones place. place. And if we move one space to the left of that, this is the tens place. Notice we went from ones to tens. Tens are 10 times as much as ones. And then we move one space to the left of that, we go to the, we multiply by tens again, we get to the hundreds space. And so this nine doesn't just represent nine, it represents 900. Or we could write that as 900. Similarly, the seven doesn't just represent seven, it represents seven tens or 70. This three represents three ones, so it actually does represent three. But as I promised, we're now going to extend our understanding. And what we do is we put a decimal here, which you've probably seen before, at the right, and the way, the reason why we even need a decimal is to really tell us where our ones place is. We say, oh, okay, if we go right to the left of the decimal, that's going to be our one space. Because once we start introducing decimals, we can introduce as many spaces as we want to the right of the decimal. And so let's think about those a little bit. If when we went from hundreds to tens, notice, we divided by 10. When we go from tens to ones, notice you divide by 10. So what do you think this place over here is going to be called? Well, what happens if you take 1 divided by 10? Well, then you get a 10. So, as you might imagine, this is the tenths place. And then if you were to go one place to the right of that, what would this place be? Well, it would be tenths divided by 10, or one tenth of a tenth. So this would be a hundredth, hundredths place. And then if you were to go one space to the right, and we could keep doing this forever, but Let's if we were to go, go one space to the right of that, what would it be? Well, a hundredth divided by 10, or one tenth of a hundredth, is a thousandth, thousandth space. And so, for example, if I were to extend this number, instead of it just being 973, if I were to write 973.526, what do these numbers, these digits represent? This five doesn't just represent five, it represents, it represents five tenths. Or another way of writing five tenths, you could write it like this, 0 0.5. You just have a five in the tenths place. Or you could write it as five tenths. This two, and I think you get where this is going, this doesn't just represent two, it represents two hundredths. I'm just going to make it very explicit in this video so it's very clear, two hundredths. Another way to write that is you just write a two in the hundredths place. So we're going one, two spaces to the right of the decimal, or you could write it as two over a hundred, two hundredths. And so, you know, for kicks, pause the video. What are all the different ways of representing this six? Well, what does this six represent? Zero, zero, six, well, this is six, six thousandths. Thousand. Six thousandths. Six thousandths. Six thousandths. There you go. How would, I could also write that as zero point, let's see, this is the tenths place, hundredths place, and then in the thousandths place, I have six. Or I could write this as six over 1,000, six thousandths. So big picture, 
place value, we can keep going to the right of the decimal. And we can start representing things that are, I guess you could say, more precise. What we're going to do in this video is explore place value involving decimals. And in particular, we're going to think about how you can regroup value from one place to another, which is going to be very useful later in your life when you start doing some more arithmetic with decimals. So let's first think about what this number is right over here. So each square represents a one or represents a whole. So what number is this? Well, you could see that we have three whole ones, so we could write three. And then we have right over here, a, a whole is divided into 10 equal bars, these vertical bars. And so each of these are a tenth, and four of them are shaded in. So it's three ones, four tenths. And in this, this part right over here, we've divided a whole into 100 equal sections. It's a 10 by 10 grid. And we can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are shaded in. So this represents seven hundredths. So this is 3.47. Or three, four, three and four tenths and seven hundredths, or three and 47 hundredths. Now what we're going to do is explore how are other ways you can, you can put the value into the different places. So let me set up a little, a little table here. I don't think I'm going to need all that space. But we have, in this first example, so we have our ones, we have our ones place, we have our tenths place, and we have our hundredths. Hundredths. No. Hundredths place. I had to curve up a little bit. And so what we just did is we said, hey, this was pretty straightforward. This was three ones, three ones, four tenths, and seven hundredths. Seven hundredths. But are there other ways that we could look at it? For example, is there a way of reimagining this? So instead of three ones, we have two ones, and we still have seven hundredths. So how many tenths would we have in order for it to be the same value? Pause this video and think about that. All right, we'll do it together. And to help us, I will put what we had here just now. Now what's different, instead of having three ones, we now have two ones. So we could say that these are our two ones right over here. Our two ones. We have our seven hundredths right over here. So essentially we would have to express all of this in terms of tenths. So how would we express it all in terms of tenths? Well, this, what used to be a one, this is equivalent to 10 tenths. Let me make that very clear. I could, so let me see if I could shade this in with that green color. So there you go. I'm going to shade it with the green color. And then let me draw a bunch of lines here to make it very clear. So I'm just going to hand draw it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I didn't draw it as straight as I need to. They really should be 10 equal sections, but it was hand drawn, so I think you understand. And so look, notice, I took the exact same value, but I have regrouped. I have regrouped this one right over here into tenths. And so how many tenths are here? Four tenths. Well, now I have 10 plus four tenths. So now I have, shaded in, 14 tenths. That was interesting. Let's do a, another example. So now let's imagine another scenario. Let's imagine a scenario where we have three ones again. But this time, instead of having seven hundredths, we have 27 hundredths. So in that circumstance, how many tenths would we have? Pause this video and see if you can work it through. All right, well, let's get that same number again. And now let's think about how we might have to regroup between the places. So we have our three ones. So that was just like the first case. Right over there. So we have our three ones. But now we have 27 hundredths. So in, in addition to these seven hundredths, we have to find another 20 hundredths someplace. Well, the most natural place to go would be right over here. And 20 hundredths is the same thing as two tenths. So what we want to do is we would convert these two tenths into hundredths. And so let me actually just shade it in a little bit. 
So I'm going to convert this right over here to hundredths. And so there, did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so there you have it. This plus this gives us our 27 hundredths. And so how many tenths do we have left? We have two tenths. Two tenths. So in this situation, we regrouped two from the tenths place and we expressed them as hundredths. So two tenths became 20 hundredths. Add it to the seven hundredths that you already have, and we now have 27 hundredths. Hopefully that makes sense. We're asked, which two of the following expressions have the same value as 8.76? Pause this video and see if you can figure this out on your own. First one. All right, now let's do it together. And before I even one. look at these choices, I'm just going to really understand yeah, what one, this number one. represents. And let me just rewrite it. So we have 8.76. So there's a couple of ways that we could think about it. We can look at our place values. This right over here, this is the ones place. This right over here, this is the tenths place. And this right over here, place. This right, right, one. Yeah. right over here, this is the. We can look at our place values. This right over here, this is the ones place. This right over here, this is the tenths place. And this right over here is the hundredths. Hundredths place. And so we could view this as eight ones and seven tenths. And six hundredths, or eight ones plus seven tenths plus six hundredths. Well, that's exactly what they wrote right over here. Eight ones, seven tenths, and six hundredths. So I would choose that one for sure. Now, this second choice looks like an expanded form, but before I even look at it, let's see how we would think about it over here. If we wanted to essentially write the same idea but in expanded form, eight ones is the same thing as eight times one. And actually, let me color code it so you see where things are coming from. So eight ones, that's the same thing as eight times one. And to that, we would add seven tenths. So that's plus seven times one tenth. So seven tenths plus, and I'll do this in this orange color, six hundredths. So that's plus six times a hundredth. Six hundredths. So this would be this number in expanded form. Is that what they put right over here? Yes, it is indeed what they put right over here. So I will circle that in. Now if you're doing this on your own, we know that we just picked two answers. But let's see these, whether these other forms, or let's see if we can write this in these other forms and see how these might not be the exact answer. So if we were to, if we were to write this out and take out each of the decimal parts, so the eight ones, you would just write that as eight. The seven tenths, seven tenths, well that would be plus 0 0.7. This is seven tenths right over here. This and this and this part right over here are all equivalent. And then last but not least, you have your six hundredths. So plus, so that's our ones, that's our tenths, and then we're in our hundredths place and we're gonna have six of them. So this would be equal to our original value. But that's not what they wrote over here. They did write eight ones, they did write seven tenths, but they did not write six hundredths here. They wrote six thousandths here. So we can rule that one out. And then if we were to write it out in words, we would say this is eight, eight, and, do and in a neutral color. Now, you might say and seven tenths and six hundredths. Or you could often, what's normally is you express it in the, the lowest place that you have or the most, the most precise place that you have. So you could view seven tenths as 70 hundredths or you could view, you could view this whole thing as 76 hundredths. So it could be eight and 70, 76 hundredths. Un Hundredths. But what they wrote over here, they did write eight, but instead of 76 hundredths, they wrote eight and 67 hundredths. A little tricky. So we would rule that one out as well. All right. It is.
to this moment. Yeah. How can write in words twenty and eight hundreds? Just my answer. Write three ones and four tenths and two hundreds to this moment. Write eight to seven hundreds instead. Which expression is the same as 400 and 900? Nine, 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 nine of the thousands. So let's we'll say that 900 to thousands. Okay. Anyway, seems to be one the answer. So we'll just find uh, yeah. And it should be this one. Write the following number by entering one digit in each block. So, place block 900, 5 tenths, block 0 ones, and 4 hundredths, and 8 thousandths. So, we have 950 point zero four eight. Represent the expression. It's a decimal. Okay, so we have 4,300 point uh, zero sixty seven. Same as then seven one. It's, it's not one. Um, and there we go. Twenty one. Uh, there we go. Let's go. The fraction wait what? Oh okay. Whoa, wait. The one move. The fraction and decimal. I guess it's this one in ninety-nine. Well, hundred point ninety-nine. Each big square below represents one. Which of the following does not sh does the shaded area represent? Okay, it represents uh, two point four. Wait, what? This is two point four. It's a hole. Two holes. That's two. Yo, wait, that's hard. Two hundred four hundreds. Look at this one. I mean, if I say two hundred four hundreds, this is a hundred, right? Like, uh, five hundred, fifty hundreds, uh, five hundred. Pretty confusing. Each big square below represents one hole. One of uh, seven. Two point one this fraction. Seven over ten. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. This is one and five hundred and one. Point zero five eight, I believe. Thank you. Onward. Select the written form of each number. This is thirty two hundreds. This is thirty two hundreds. Neither. Which of the following numbers are equivalent to fifty four hundreds? This one. And this one. Write four to eight hundred as a fraction in the decimal. Uh, so fraction is gonna be four to eight four hundred and the sound is going to be four to Select the written form of each number. Uh, for four tenths, four tenths, 
not 400 is. Complete the chart plot. 7 and 7 and 8 hundreds. Oh, 7 and 8 hundreds. 7 and 8 hundreds. Which, of, which two of the following have the same values? Two ones and nine six. Two ones and nine tens and six thousands. And no. And no. Two answers. Yo, 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 yo. Two times ten is twenty. Yo, which one want answer to this one? 96,000. Oh shit, it's actually 1,000. It's not 100. It's okay. I bet. 96,000. Mm, this one's correct. This one's correct as well. Complete the chart below. Expanded form. Okay, it seems correct. Yeah, it's Word wash it six and seventeen thousands. Right? Ten thousands and seven seven hundreds wait what? One hundred seven no seven six and seventeen thousands. Which of the following have the same values eighteen ones and three hundred two thousands? One ten, eight ones, three tens, yeah, and two thousands. One times ten, eight times one plus uh, two, one of them. Oh, this is correct. So well, this one is a hundred. No. This is also the number line. Graph 0 0.6 on the number line. Down here we have a number line that goes from 0 to 1, and it's split into 1, 2, 3, 4, Girl, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal spaces. These tick marks, there's 10 of these spaces all the way from 0 to 1. So between any two of these spaces, for example, between these first two tick marks could be represented by one tenth. It's one, one of the ten equal spaces. It's one tenth of the distance. Now the number we're supposed to graph is 0 0.6. Well, this six. Okay. The order. Is in the tenth. place value. So now the number we're supposed to graph is 0 0.6. Well, this 6 is in the tenths place value. So another way we could read this decimal is 6 tenths, or as the fraction, 6 tenths. So if one of these spaces represents 1 out of 10 equal spaces, and we want six tenths, then we need to travel six of the ten equal spaces. Six tenths of the way. Six of the ten spaces. So we can start at the beginning and go one, two, three, four, five, six. And graph right here with a point, and this is six tenths. And then the Abruptly. Where is the point on the number line? Well, here it is. Here's the point. But I'm guessing <laughs> that they're asking not literally just to find it and look at it, but what number yeah, is this point, point graphed at? Where is this on the number line? So one thing we know pretty quickly is the number is between 3 and 4. 
It's greater than 3, but it's not quite 4. But to figure out how much greater than 3, we need to know what these black tick marks represent. So between 3 and 4, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal spaces. So each of these distances, each of these equal spaces, is 1 tenth or one tenth of the distance between three and four. It's one out of ten equal spaces. So if that's one tenth, then this next space is another one tenth, and then we have to travel one more tenth to get to our point. So we went three, we know it's three, plus one, two, three tenths. Three and three tenths. Or, let's write this as a decimal. Let's look at it as a decimal. If we wanted, we could have our ones place value, and then after the ones, the decimal, and the tenths. So for the ones, there's three ones. And how many tenths did we see here? There were three tenths. So either way, we can say three and three tenths, or three and three tenths. Our decimal, our point, is 3.3 3 on the number line. 3.3. 3. We're asked to move the orange dot to 5.90 on the number line. Or you could view this as 5 and 90 hundredths or 5 and 9 tenths. All right, so let's see. This is 5.8, and then this is 6.0. One way to think about it is 5.9 is exactly halfway between 5.8 and 6.0. And this is, it's written as 5.90, but we could view this as 5.9. So it's going to be exactly, exactly halfway. Now one interesting, to think, one interesting thing to think about is, well, what do each of these tick marks represent? Well, if this is 5.8, and if a tenth higher than 5.8 is 5.9 over here, and then a tenth higher than that is 6.0, so from here One to tenth. here is a tenth, and then from here to here is another tenth. And so each of these, and then they've divided each tenth into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 sections. So each of these represent a tenth of a tenth, or a hundredth. So for example, this would be 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 5.99, 
move the orange dot to 0 0.27 on the number line. Well, this is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.3. So going from here to here is a tenth, and then they've divided that tenth into 10 sections. So each of these is a tenth of a tenth, which is a hundredth. So this is 2 tenths and 0 hundredths, 2 tenths and 1 hundredth, 2 tenths and 2 hundredths, 2 tenths and 3 hundredths, 2 tenths and 4 hundredths, 2 tenths and 5 hundredths, 2 tenths and 6 hundredths, 2 tenths and 7 hundredths. This is 2 tenths and 7 hundredths. Another way you could view it is, this is 20 hundredths. 2 tenths is the same thing as 20 hundredths. 21 hundredths, 22 hundredths, 23 hundredths, 24 hundredths, 25 hundredths, 26 hundredths, 27 hundredths. All right, check our answer. And let's just see what the hints. So they say 10 equal pieces. They show us that right over here. They actually labeled it. Anyway. Hopefully this helps. I encourage you to go try this exercise out now. No, oh, but I can. There's more videos. Graph 0 0.04 on the number line. So here we have this number line that goes from 0 to 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. And between 0 and 1 tenth, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal spaces. So each of these spaces represents 1 tenth of the distance. It's 1 out of 10 equal spaces. Or we could say it is 1 tenth of this tenth. It's a tenth of the way to 1 tenth. That's a little bit tricky. Maybe let's pause and look at that visually and think about what does a tenth of a tenth really mean. So here I have already drawn a picture that's divided into 10 equal pieces. And if we shade one of them, then we're shading one tenth. This right here is one tenth. And this amount right here is what the number line showed. The whole number line showed one tenth. But then we had divided that tenth into 10 equal pieces. So if we split that 10 into 10 equal pieces, we're going to have something like this. So here again, this top row would represent the entire tenth from the whole number line. But each little piece would be one of those one tenth of that whole tenth. Or, so this is what each little piece on the number line represents, or we could say that's one one hundredth. A tenth of a tenth is a one hundredth, because when you divide ten into ten equal pieces, you're going to end up with a hundred pieces. So a tenth of a tenth is a one hundredth. So looking back at the number line, now we know that this distance, a tenth of our tenth, is a one hundredth. And we want to graph 0 0.04. Well, this 4 zero right here, zero this four, 4, let's think about place value, the zeros in the ones, the next zero in the tenth, four and this hundreds. 4 is in the hundredths. So we could call this 4 hundredths, or even the fraction 4 hundredths. So if one of these lengths is 1 hundredth, and we want to go 4 hundredths, then we're need, gonna need to go four of these lengths. One, two, three, four of these lengths would be four of the hundredths, or 0 0.04. Nice. Where is the point on the number line? Here we have a number line that starts at 1.5, or 1 and 5 tenths, and goes to 1 and 7 tenths. So the distance between these larger blue tick marks is one tenth because we go from one, one and five one tenths to one and six seven. tenths, so that went up a tenth, and then up to one seven and seven tenths. Seven so this distance here, this five distance tenths, here, seven. is so one, one tenth, or we could write that as a decimal, one tenth, or as a fraction, one tenth. That distance between each of these blue large tick marks is a tenth. But we want to know what is this green point right here. So to figure that out, we also need to figure out what do these black tick marks represent, these smaller distances. So from here to here is one tenth. And within that tenth, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equal spaces. 
So each of these little spaces is one-tenth one tenth of this distance because it's one of the ten equal spaces. So this right here is a this right here is a tenth of this tenth because the large distance is a tenth and this is one tenth of that tenth. Another way we could say that is a one hundredth. A tenth of a tenth, if you take one tenth and divide it into ten pieces, now you have a one hundredth. So this distance is a one hundredth, which means that each of these distances, this is another hundredth and another hundredth. So how many hundredths till we get to our point? Let's see, one hundred, seven two, hundredths. three, four, Eight. five, six, seven. Seven hundredths is what it took us to get there. So we could say seven hundredths, the fraction, or the decimal, 0 0.07 with a seven in the hundredths place. So, looking at the whole number line now, putting the whole thing together, we started at 1.5, or 1 in 5 tenths, and we went another 7 hundredths. So we can write that as plus 7 hundredths. So we have 1 in 5 tenths plus 7 more hundredths, which is a total of 1 and 57 hundredths, or 1.57. So our point right here is at 1.57. 1 in 5 tenths plus 7 more hundredths gets us to 1 and 57 hundredths. That's not right. Thousands on the number line. Uh, We're asked, what is the value of the point graphed on the number line? And this is the point right over here. So pause so this video and see if you can figure that thousand. out before we figure it out together. That's All be, right, um, so let's try to figure thousand. it out together now. So, so let's see, this point is thousand. between, this so is going to be, this is the tenths place, eight. this is the hundredths place. So this over here is three hundredths, and this over here is four hundredths. So our point is between three hundredths and four hundredths. And the space between three hundredths and four hundredths so is divided into ten equal spaces. So if this whole thing is a hundredth, so this whole thing is equal to 0 0.01, 0 .01, the difference between that, that's a hundredth. So then each tenth of that is it's going to be a thousandth. So let me, I don't want to make this too messy. So this right over here will be one tenth of a hundredth, which is going to be a thousand. So it's going to be 0 0.001. We have a one in the thousandths place. So one way to think about it, this number is going to be 0 0.03. So we have our three hundredths, but then let's see how many thousandths we have to add to it to get to this value right over here. We have to add one thousandth, two thousandths, three thousandths, four thousandths, five thousandths, six thousandths, seven thousandths, and eight thousandths. So we are starting at three hundredths, and then we are adding eight thousandths, so you add 0 0.008 to get to this value. So if you were to add these two together, you're going to have three hundredths, and then the next place over is the thousandths place, and we have eight of them. So this point right over here is 0 0.038, or you could view this as 38 thousandths, because 3 hundredths is 30 thousandths. So any way you want to view it, this is the value of the point graphed on the number line, 0 0.038. We're told. Someone's not going to move back. All right. I'm back, boys. I just kind of grab myself another round of coffee. And maybe get like a five minute break. Then it's completely. Told. We're we're told, express the point on the number line as both a fraction and a decimal. So pause this video and have a go at that. 
All right, now let's do this together. So we can see that the point in question, it's at a higher value than 4, and it's less than 5. So greater than 4, less than 5. And the space between 4 and 5 is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal sections. So each of these hash marks represent an extra tenth. So this is 4, then this is 4 and 1 tenth. And now this is four right over here and two tenths. So we could write this, if we wanted to write it as a fraction or as a mixed number, this would be four and two tenths. And if we wanted to write that as a decimal, that would be four. And then in the tenths place, well, we have two tenths. And that's it, we're done. Let's do another example. So here, we're once again asked to express the point on the number line as both a fraction and a decimal. But this one's a little bit different, but see how you, if you can identify how it is different and, and answer the question. So pause this video and, and once again have a go at it. All right. Okay, so, so here, like, oh, our point, it's not hundreds. between two whole numbers. Yeah. It's actually between Isn't two tenths. We're between three and two tenths and three and uh, three tenths. So this is between four, three and two tenths and three and three tenths. Three so each of these hash marks, which are a tenth of a tenth, so they would actually be a hundredth. Yeah. So one way to think about it, you could view 3.2 or 3 and 2 tenths as 3 and 20 hundredths. And you could view 3 and 3 tenths as 3 and 30 hundredths. And so this is 3 and 20 hundredths. This is 20, 3 and 21 hundredths. 3 and 22 hundredths. So this point right over here is 3 and 22 hundredths. 22 hundredths, and of course, you could also write that as a mixed number. That is 3 and 22 over 100. Now, another way that you could have approached it is, hey, I'm starting at 3.2, or 3 and 2 tenths, and I'm, so I'm starting here at 3.2, and then I'm going to add to that, not just 1 hundredth, but 2 hundredths. So it would be 3, 2 tenths, and then two hundredths. And there you have it. We've expressed it as both a fraction and a decimal. Oh, okay, play decimal. Looks like we're done, so... Almost nothing. Bye. <laughs> 
Oh shit. First one scratched. Is this right? Gosh, why do I keep on fuse? That's one and Nine and forty two hundreds. Yo. Level down this must an expanded form. Yeah. 
right to tensor subtraction in the decimal. Uh, Two tenths, uh, so one, two tenths, six, once. Rounding decimals. Round 9.564, or 9 and 564, thousandths to the nearest tenth to the nearest tenth so let me write it a little bit larger 9.564 and we need a round to the nearest tenth so what's the tenth place five. the tenth place is right here this right here represents five tenths this is the ones place this is the tenths place this is the hundredths place and this is the thousands place right here so we need a round to the nearest tenth so if we round up this will be 9.6 if we round down this will be 9.5 and just like regular rounding when we're not dealing with decimals you move to one spot or you look at one place to the right or one place lower i guess and you say, is that 5 or larger? If it is, you round up. If it isn't, you round down. 6 is definitely 5 or larger. So we want to round up. We want to round up. So this 9.564 becomes 9.6. 9.6, or we could call this 9 and 6 tenths. And then we're done. So we are asked to drag the point to 12.5 on the number line. So let's see. Let's see, this is 12, and then 12.5 is halfway between 12 and 13. Then they say, what is 12.5 rounded to the nearest 10? Well, what's cool about this is you can see on the number line that our 10s are in this blue hash. So we have 10 and then 20. And we're between 10 and 20. And which one are we closest to? Which is literally the nearest 10? Well, you can see we're closer to 10 than we are to 20. So you would say. 10. And this helps us build an intuition for what rounding to the nearest 10 even means. What? Rounding to the nearest 10 means. Because okay. you might know a rule like, hey, look, you go one place less than the tens place, which would be the ones place. And if it's less than 5 there, you round down to 10. If it's 5 or greater, you round up to 20. 20. But you see why over here. We are just closer to 10. Let's do another example here. So here it says drag the point to 0 0.136. So this is 0 0.13, this is 0 0.14. So this is 13 hundredths, and this is 14 hundredths. And let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these are, you could think of it as the 10 thousandths between these two hundredths. So we want to go 13 hundredths, and then another 6 thousandths. So let's see, we go 1. Two, three, four, five, six, just like that. And then they say, what is this number, 136 thousandths, or 0 0.136, rounded to the nearest hundredth? Well, we have our hundredths in blue here, and which one are we closer to? Well, we're closer to 14 hundredths, 0 0.14. And that's consistent with what we've seen in other cases where you look at the thousandths place, and if it's five or greater, you round up. In this case, you would round up to 14 hundredths. Let's do a few more examples here. So let's say that, so they're asking us which point is at 
44.197 on the number line. So let's see, that's going to be between 44 and 45. So it's right over here, 44.197. So that would be point C. And then they say, what is 44.197 rounded, rounded to the nearest whole number? Well, there's a couple of ways to think about it. You could just look at the tenths place and say, look, that's less than five, so we round down to 44. Or a more intuitive way of thinking about it is like, look, point C is the number we care about. That is 44.197. Is it close, what's the closest whole number to it? Is it closer to 44 or is it closer to 45? Well, it's clearly closer to 44. And so that's another reason why 44 makes a lot of sense. Let's do, let's do another example. Let's say that we want to, so they say, what is A rounded to the nearest thousandth? What is A rounded to the nearest hundredth? So A is right over here. Like, let's get our bearings. So 0 0.7, that's seven hundredths. This is eight hundredths right over here. It's 0 0.7. And then between them, you see this looks like it's zero. This is, so you could view this as 70 thousandths, 71 thousandths, 72 thousandths, 73 thousandths, 74 thousandths, and so on. So this is between 78 thousandths and 79 thousandths. So if we round to the nearest thousandth, it looks closer, in fact, it's definitely closer to 78 thousandths than it is to 79 thousandths. So I would say this is 0 0.078 or 78 thousandths. It's closer, that's the nearest thousandth. What is A rounded to the nearest hundredth? Well, what are the hundredths that it's in between? It's in between seven hundredths and eight hundredths. And which one is it closer to? Well, it's closer to eight hundredths, 0 0.08. So once again, the whole point of this video is to appreciate when people oh, say round to the nearest whole number, to the nearest 10, to the nearest thousandth, to the nearest hundredth, you can think of it on a number line and just say, well, what is the closest hundredth to it, or what hundredth is it closest to? Which thousandth is it closest to on the number line? Is it closest to? It's in between 79 thousandths. So I would say the 79 thousandths. So if we round to the nearest thousandth, it looks closer, in fact, it's definitely closer to 78 thousandths than it is to 79 thousandths. So I would say this is 0 0.078 or 78. Point seven. Yeah, this is going to have one hundred eight. Nearest one. Okay, six. Nearest one. Nearest one hundred. Hundred. One seven. Just then. Nearest then. Nearest hundred. Forty eight point zero seven. Ah, uh, 52.81 in the number. What is A rounded to the nearest thousand? 78, 78 and it's 79. Okay, so it's a thousand. So it's going to be uh, 70, still 78, 0 0.078. I guess, I guess this one's uh, maybe 0 0.78. Wait, what? Twenty-four. So this each jump. 
Speed is not right. Each one is a thousand. Each deck mark. A thousand and half. It's seventy-eight. Ah, seventy-eight. Ah, okay. It's going to be like 0 0.0784. It's going to round down. What's the A nearest hundred? Uh, nearest hundred is going to be 0, 0.0. What, which point is 7.46 on the number? Uh, 7.46 on B. What is from the nearest then? 7.5 What is A rounded to the nearest whole number? Okay, it's gonna uh, 59 Uh, third It's correct, I don't know Right, it's correct Drag the card straight in number matches the smooths. Uh, the number ends in tenth place. The eight is the nearest one when round. What? Eight is the nearest one. Oh shit, because this one's even nice at it. Oh shit. Do the following amounts around to run it to the nearest ten dollars. Can I just restart shit? Which the following amounts around to two forty ninety for rounding to the nearest dollar? Write the cards to create the number to match the source. The number ends in the hundreds place. The no six is the greatest, is the nearest one when rounding. Which of the following numbers round to 700 to the for under the nearest 10? Okay. So, Five, three, seven, five, two, three. Two is the nearest one when rounding. Yo, subscribe. Two. A2 is in the thousands place. Describe it. Uh, which of the following numbers are five that were rounding to the nearest end? Drag the cards here. The number ends in the tenths place. 50 is. Oh. The 50 is the, is the nearest band around. Yo, what? Yo, what's this? 50 is the nearest. Oh, I think it's where. It's the nearest 10. Which of the following numbers around the 36 point is the one for the nearest 10? Nearest 10. Here is 10, 36.2. Just two answers. Is my record going? Okay, it's running. It's running.
spot. Let's compare 0 0.1 to 0 0.070. So this one right over here, it is in the tenths place. So it literally represents 1 times 1 tenth. 1 times 1 tenth, which is obviously the same thing as 1 tenth. Now when we look at this number right over here, it has nothing in the tenths place. It has 7 in the hundredths place. So this is the hundredths place right over here. And then it also has nothing in the thousandths place. So this number can be rewritten as 7 times as 7 times 1 over 100, or 7 hundredths. 7 hundredths. And now we could compare these two numbers. And there's two ways you could think about it. You could try to turn 1 tenth into hundredths. And the best way to do that, if you want the denominator to be increased by a factor of 10, you need to do the same thing to the numerator. So all I did is I multiplied the numerator and denominator by 10. 10 one hundredths is the exact same thing as 1 tenth. And here it becomes very clear. 10 hundredths is definitely larger than 7 hundredths. Another way you could think about this is, look, if you were to increment by hundredths here, you would go to 700, or you'd start at 7 hundredths, 8 hundredths, 9 hundredths, and then you'd get to 10 hundredths. So then you would get to that number. So this number, multiple ways you could think about it, is definitely larger. So let me write this down. This is definitely larger, greater than. This is greater than that. I, I, the greater than symbol opens to the larger value. So here we have 0 0.093, and here we have 0 0.01. So let's just think about this a little bit. So this 9, let me get a new color here. This 9 is not in the tenths, the hundredths. It's in the thousandths place. It's in the thousandths place. And this 3. This 3 is in the, I'm running out of colors again. This 3 is in the 10 thousandths place. So the 3 is in the 10 thousandths place. So you could literally view this as 9 thousandths, 9 thousandths plus 3 10 thousandths, plus 3 10 thousandths. And if you just wanted to write it in terms of 10 thousandths, you can multiply the 9 and 1,000 by 0. And so it becomes 90 over 10, 000, 90 10 thousandths. And if you want to add them together, you could, of course, write this as 93 10 thousandths. 93 10 thousandths. 10 thousandths. I always have trouble with that THS at the end. Now let's think about this number right over here, 0 0.01. Well, this one right over here is in the hundredths place. It's in the hundredths place. So it literally represents 1 hundredth. So how can we compare 1 hundredth? to 93 10 thousandths. So the best way to think about it is, well, what's 1 hundredth in terms of 10 thousandths? Well, let's just multiply both the numerator and the denominator here by 10 twice. Or you could say, let's multiply them both by hundredths. If you multiply by 10 once, you get to 10 thousandths. It's the same thing as 1 hundredth. Multiply by 10 again, you get 100 10 thousandths is the same thing as 1 hundredth. And we know that. 100 times 100 is 10 thousand. So here it becomes very clear. 100 10 thousandths, or 1 hundredth, is definitely larger than 93 10 thousandths. So this quantity right over here is less than this quantity there. Less than symbol, the small n, points to the smaller number. Larger n to the larger number. In fact, that's true of the less than and greater than. So let's see, this one right over here, 0 0.6 versus 0 0.06. So here I have versus. a 6 in the tenths place. So it literally represents 6 tenths. And here, and in the second number, I have a 6 in the hundredths place. Well, the hundred, 6 hundredths is definitely smaller than 6 tenths. A hundredth is a tenth of a tenth. So this, this one is pretty straightforward. This is going to be the larger value. 0 0.6 is greater than 0 0.06. Now let's think about 0 0.3 versus 0 0.06. So this 3 literally represents 3 tenths, 3 tenths, while this 6 right over here, while this 6 right over here represents 6 hundredths, 6 hundredths. And if you wanted to compare them directly, you could multiply 3 tenths times well, the, both the numerator and the denominator by 10. So you're not changing its value. 10 over 10 is essentially 1, or it is 1. So this becomes 30 over 300. 3 tenths is the same thing as 30 over 100. And 30 over 100 is a lot larger than 6 over 100. So this becomes 30 over 300. 3 tenths is the same thing as 30 over 100. And 30 over 100 is a lot larger than 6 over 100. So this is greater than. 
Let's compare 0 0.1. Use less than or greater than for this little brackets thing to write a true sentence. So they essentially want us to say whether 45 and 675 thousandths is greater than or less than 45 and 645 thousandths. So let's look at each of these numbers. I'm going to write them on top of it. Hey, I'm done. Hey, Ying. So each other. So the first number is 45 and 675 thousandths. And the second number is 45 first and than. 645 than thousandths. Now when you look at everything here, the only place where these two numbers are different, so now when you look at everything here, and 645 thousandths. Now when you look at everything here, the only place where these two numbers are different is in the is in the hundredths place. We have seven hundredths here and we have four hundredths here. Everything is the same. So this number is going to be greater. This number is greater than 45 point six four five or six hundred and forty five thousand. So let me write that down just to make sure we know what we're doing. Forty five and six hundred and seventy five thousandths or forty five point six seven five is definitely greater than forty five point six four five or forty five and six hundred and forty five thousandths. <laughs> Let's compare 9.97 to 9.9 to 9.798. So to compare to figure out which one of these is greater, I like to start with the largest place values and then and then keep moving to smaller and smaller ones until we actually see a difference. So they both have nine ones. So they both have nine ones. So at least in the ones place they seem comparable to each other. Now let's go to the tenths place. So this number on the left has a 9 in the tenths place, while the number on the right has a 7 in the tenths place. So right now we could view this. Let's just write the whole numbers out. So this one is 9 plus 9 tenths. We haven't gone to the hundredths place yet. So far, out of the two digits, the two places we've looked at, this one on the right, this one on the right is 9 plus 7 tenths, plus 7, plus 7 tenths. So this immediately cues to me that this, the one on the left is a larger number. You're like, hey, how do I know immediately that's the larger number? I have all this other stuff to the right. I have this 9, 8 to the right. I have this 7 to the right. And the way to think about it is, no matter what you have, even if you if you really increase this right hand side here as much as much as possible, you're still less than 9.8. In fact, if you keep incrementing the thousandths here, you go from 9.798 to 9.799 to 9.8. So you would have to actually increase to get to even 9.8, and this is at 9.9. .9. So you can really just look at the, the discrepancy in the largest place value to recognize which number is greater. This has 9 tenths. This has 7 tenths. It doesn't matter what's going on in the hundredths and the thousandths place. And to make that clear, let's actually add up these numbers and compare them as fractions. So let's keep on going with this. So you have 7 hundredths here. So you have 7 hundredths here. And here you have 9 hundredths. So here you have 9 hundredths. And then finally, here you have zero thousandths, thousandths, and here, let me do that in a different color. I, use, I already used blue. And here you have eight thousandths. So plus eight over a thousand. So let's, let's put everything in terms of thousandths so that we can add these all up and have fractions both, or have two fractions over a thousandths, or things in terms of thousandths. So nine is the same thing as nine thousand over a thousand. 9 tenths, well, let's see. If you multiplied it by 10, you'd get 90 over 100. Multiply by 10 again, 
you get nine hundred thousandths. Seven hundredths multiplied by ten is seventy thousandths. And let's do that over here. Once again, nine is nine thousand over a thousand. And then plus seven hundred over a thousand. Plus seven hundred over a thousand. Plus ninety over a thousand. Plus ninety over a thousand. Just multiply the numerator and denominator by ten. Plus eight over a thousand. Plus eight over a thousand. And so what is this number on the left? This number on the left is how many thousandths is it? It's nine thousand nine hundred and seven. No, sorry, nine thousand nine hundred seventy. So it's nine thousand nine thousand nine hundred nine hundred and seventy and seventy thousandths. While this number on the right here is the number on the right here is nine thousand nine thousand seven hundred seven hundred ninety eight ninety eight thousandths. So here, once again, you're comparing two numbers. They have the same number of thousands. This has 900. This only has 700. So even though this is almost 800, 800 is still less than 900. So no, no matter how you think about it, the number on the left, the number on the left is greater than the number on the right. Cool. Oh, same video. We're asked to compare 156.378 to 156.348. So I assume that they are trying to, they're asking us which of these is greater. And so let's rewrite these numbers. 156.378, and we want to compare that to 156. 0.348, and it might already be obvious to you which of these is greater, but I'll work through it step by step just in case it's not. So let's first go to the hundreds place, and you can view this as, to some degree, the most significant place, because this is where the, you have the largest, you know, the one in the hundreds place represents a lot more than a one in, a in the tens place or a one in the sixes place. A one in a hundreds place represents 100. It's this many hundreds. But we have the same number of hundreds in both situations. We have one. It's this many hundreds. But we have the same number of hundreds in both situations. We have 100 and we have 100. Let's go to the tens place. We have five tens here, which is 50. And we have 50 right over here. So so far, so they're, they're, they're equal, so far, if you just look at the hundreds and the tens place. Let's go to the ones place. We have a six here in the ones place, six ones, which is really just six. And you also have six ones. So so far, they're equal again. Let's go to the tenths place. Three tenths, three tenths. Let's go to the hundredths place. So we're going into smaller and smaller places. So then you have the seven hundredths. We have seven hundredths here. Now we have four hundredths here. So this has less hundredths than this does over here. And if we go to the thousandths place, these are equal. But it doesn't matter even if these were unequal. It doesn't matter even if this part was this one was larger than this one because in the more significant place this number was larger than this number so 7 is greater than 4 we have 7 7 hundredths here we have 4 hundredths here so we get this number is greater than this number down here or 156.378 is greater than 156.348 and in particular it's because of the hundredths place So what we're going to do in this video is build our muscles at comparing numbers that are represented in different ways. So for example, right over here on the left, we have 0 0.37. You could also view this as 37 hundredths. And on the right, we have 307 thousandths. And so what I want you to do is pause this video and figure out, are these equal to each other? Or is one of them larger than the other? And if one of them is, which one is larger and which one is smaller? Pause this video and try to the figure that out. The left one is larger. All right, now let's try to do this together. And the way that my brain works is I try to put them into a common representation. So one way we could do it is we could try to rewrite this one on the right as a decimal. So let's do that. So we could rewrite this as, it's 
expressing a certain number of thousands. And so let me just make some blanks for our various places. So let's say that's the ones place, and that's our decimal. That's going to be our tenths place. That's going to be our hundredths place. And that's going to be our thousandths place. So one way to view 307 thousandths is that we have 307 of this place right over there. So we could just write the seven there, the zero there, and the three over there. This over here would be 307 thousandths. And so we would have no ones. And so when you look at it this way, it's a little bit easier to compare. You can say, all right, we have the same number of ones. We have the same number of tenths. Let me compare the like ones to the like ones. So our tenths are equal. But what happens when we get to the hundredths? Here we have seven hundredths. And here we have zero hundredths. So this, this number on the left is going to be larger. So 37 hundredths is greater than 307 thousandths. Another way that we could have done this is we could have re-expressed this left number in terms of thousandths. We could have rewritten it as, instead of 37 hundredths, we could have just said 0 0.37 and just put another zero on the right. And this is 370 thousandths. I'll write it out, 370 thousandths. And when you look at it this way, once again, it's clear that 370 of something is more than 307 of that something. So this quantity on the left is larger. Let's do another example, but I'll use different formats. So let's say on the left, I mean, I'll use decimal format. I'll have 0 0.6 or 6 tenths. And then on the right, I'm going to have 6 times 1 over 100. Pause this video and tell me which of these quantities, if either, are greater or are they equal to each other? Left one is larger. All right. So once again, in order to tackle this, you really just have to think about what are different ways to represent them and really just try to get to a common representation. Right, and so I could rewrite 6 tenths as 6 times 1 tenth. 6 times 1 tenth. And this might be enough to be able to compare the two because 6 times 1 tenth, is that going to be greater than or less than or equal to 6 times 100th? Well, a tenth is 10 times larger than a hundredth. So because this is 10 times larger than that, if you multiply it by six, well, this is going to be a larger quantity. So we could go and say, hey, this is greater than that. Another way that you might have realized that is if you were to express this right quantity as a decimal like this. So this is six times a hundredth or six hundredths. So we could write, that's our ones, that's our tenths, and then in our hundredths place, you would have six. And if it isn't obvious that this is less than that, you could add a zero here. And this we would read as 60 hundredths. And 60 hundredths is for sure larger than six hundredths. So these are all very reasonable ways of re-representing these numbers and putting them in the same format so we can make the comparison and realize the one on the left, actually in both scenarios, is larger than the one on the right. We're asked to order the following numbers from least to greatest. And I encourage you to pause this video and try to think of it on your own. Order these numbers from least to greatest. Oh, well, let's that. work through it all together now. So none of these numbers have any places, any value to the left of the decimal point. They have no ones here. Zero ones, zero ones, zero ones, zero ones, zero ones. So let me then go to the next East? decimal place to the right. So I'm starting with the largest decimal places, and then I'm going to and I'm going to successively smaller decimal places. So I'll go to the tenths place. Oh, sure. I'm going to try to answer it. Okay. Well, the least is uh, for the, hmm, nine. You know what, I could just do it on, which is great first, let's create this. And then I can just reverse it. First, uh, tenths place we have seven, nine, seven. So seven, 
a line through it. And then 0 0.07 only, and 0 0.07, and then 0 0.097. Yeah. It's place. So this one right over here has zero tenths. This has zero tenths. This has zero tenths. This one has zero tenths. This one has seven tenths. So this one actually has tenths. This has seven of them. So I'm going to put leave this one here as the greatest. We're ordering from least to greatest. Now let's move to the hundredths place. So th this one, this one, this one, this one all have zero tenths. Let's look at the hundredths place. This has seven hundredths. This has seven hundredths. This one has seven hundredths. This has no hundredths as well. This is zero hundredths. So this one has neither tenths nor hundredths. So this one is going to be the smallest. This one has no tenths, no hundredths. This one actually has tenths. All of these, these three in the middle, have no tenths, but they have some hundredths. And they all have the same number of hundredths. Seven hundredths, seven hundredths, seven hundredths. So now let's look at the thousandths place. This one has nine thousandths. This one has zero thousandths. And this one has zero thousandths as well. So out of these three, this one is the largest. Now, because this one actually had some thousandths out of these three. Now let's go look at, we have to pick between these two. Both of these have no tenths. Both of them have exactly seven, seven hundredths. Both of them have no thousandths. But this one has nine ten thousandths. Well, this one has no ten thousandths. So this one is less than that one. And now I'm done. I think I have ordered the numbers from least to greatest. And the key here is go to the most, the, the place value that has, that has, that's most significant, I guess you could say, that has the most value. So that was the ones place. Compare them on that, then go to successively smaller place values. Keep going to the right and keep comparing them, and then you'll be able to order them. Let's once again see if we can order now a different set of decimals from least to greatest. And once again, I encourage you to pause this video and try to do this on your own. So let's go to the most significant place, the ones place here. They, none of these have any ones. So then we can go to the next signif most significant place, which is the tenths place. This has five tenths. This has six tenths. This has one tenth. This has five tenths. This has one tenth. So if we just look at the tenths place, the ones that have the fewest tenths, this has only one tenth. This one only has one tenth. This one has five tenths. This one has five tenths. And then this one has six tenths. So I've ordered it by what's going on in the tenths place. Now, both of these have the same number of tenths. Let's move to the hundredths place to figure out which of these is larger. This one has six hundredths. This has five hundredths. So this one is larger. It has more hundredths. Same number of tenths, more hundredths. And hundredths are obviously more significant than thousandths. So it doesn't matter which one has the more thousandths. It matters that this one has more tenths. And actually, this one has more thousandths as well. But now let's go look at these two. These have the same number of tenths. They both have five tenths. But this one has six hundredths, while this one only has two hundredths. So this one is larger. And then finally, this one, of course, had six tenths. So this one had the most tenths. So we don't even have to look at the other places here. And we're done. <laughs> we're done. What we're going to do in this video is do a few examples ordering numbers that involve decimals. So let's say that we had the number. 1.001, 0. 0.1, ordering numbers that involve decimals. What we're going to do in this video is do a few examples ordering numbers that involve decimals. So let's say that we had the numbers 1.001, 0. 0.113, 0. and 1.101. 
what I would like you to do is order these numbers from least to greatest. Take out some paper and try to do it on your own before okay, we do it together. 1.001. All right, now let's do it together. And the way I would tackle ordering numbers uh, is I would go zero, to one, the largest then, place zero, value one, one, that the one, numbers have in common. Okay. So in this situation, oh, wait, one, we have zero, a ones one, place one, value in all of them. And so we can see that this has one one. one. This has zero ones. And this one has one one. So the thing that has the least ones is going to be the smallest of the numbers. So this one over here is going to be the smallest of the numbers. So let me just write that over here, 0 0.113. And now we have to figure out which one is next between 1.001 and 1.101. Well, then we just go to the next place value. So we go to the tenths place. And we see right over here, they're equal on the ones place. So if you go to the tenths place, this one has zero tenths, while this one has one tenth. So the number on the right here is going to be larger. It has more tenths. Same number of ones, but it has more tenths. It doesn't really matter what happens to the right of that. So the next smallest number, if we're ordering from least to greatest, is going to be 1.001. And then last but not least would be this one. That is the largest, 1.101. Let's do another example. Let's say we had the numbers 0 0.424, 0 0.343, and 0 0.443. Pause this video and try to order these from least to greatest on your own. And once again, the, the, the idea here is always start with the largest place value and then compare and then keep moving to the right if some things are equal. Largest here. All right, now four, let's do this four, together. So they all have zero ones, so they're all equal there, so that's not going to tell us much. So now let's go to the tenths place. So here I have four tenths, here I have three tenths, here I have four tenths. So I don't even have to look at the hundredths or the thousandths place. This one has the least tenths, so I can put that as the least or the smallest of the three numbers, 0 0.343. And now, so I've already used that one. And so I need to compare these two numbers. They have the same number of ones. They have the same number of tenths. So then we move to the hundredths. So here I have two hundredths. Here I have four hundredths. This one has less hundredths than this one. So the one on the left is going to be the next smallest number. So then we have 0 0.4 to four, and then last but not least, this one right over here, it has the same number of ones as everything else. It has more tenths than this middle one and the same number of tenths as the left one. But then it has, but more then it also hundreds. has more hundredths First than the one. left one right over here. So this is the largest of the numbers, 0 0.443. And we're done. So we have four numbers listed here. And what I would like you to do is get out some pencil and paper and pause this video and see if you can order these numbers from least to greatest. So the least would be at the left and then keep going greater and greater and greater until you get to the greatest number. So pause the video and have a go at that. All right, now let's tackle this together. And the way that I like to do it is I start at the, I guess you could say the most significant place value or the largest place value, compare the numbers, and then keep moving to the right to smaller and smaller place values. So we can start in the ones place. Okay. This number Done. has zero ones, this number has zero ones, this number has zero ones, and that number has zero ones. So the ones place really doesn't help us much. But then we can move to the tenths place. This number has seven tenths. This number has zero tenths. So just from that, we know that the second number is less than the first number. This has seven tenths, this has zero tenths. It doesn't matter what's happening in the places after that, to the right of that. This number over here also has seven tenths, just like the first number. And this last number also has seven tenths. So what we know from comparing the, the ones and then the tenths place is that this number right over here is the smallest of the four numbers. They all have zero ones, but this one also has zero tenths. So I'll list that here, 0 0.074. Now let's move to the hundredths place. So this number has zero hundredths. We've already used this number. This number has seven hundredths. And then this number, it might not be obvious, but the hundredths place you can view as being zero. The hundredths place, 
you could just put a zero there and not change the value. So this also has zero hundredths. So these three numbers, same ones, same tenths, but this number, 0 0.77, has seven hundredths, while the other two had zero hundredths. So this is going to be the largest of our four numbers. This is larger than these other two because of what we see in the, the hundredths place. It doesn't matter what's happening in the thousandths place or anything beyond that. So we put the 0 0.77 right over there. And now we are tasked, and we've used this number. And now we have to compare these two numbers, which were equal in the ones, tenths, and hundredths place. So we have to go to the thousandths place. This number has seven thousandths. This number has zero thousandths. Zero thousandths. So this number is smaller than this first number here. So I'll write this next, 0 0.7. And then the third smallest, or the next to largest number, is this one over here, 0 0.707. And we're done. So the, the main idea is you want to compare the most significant place values, the largest place values first. And then based on that, keep moving to the right to compare less and less significant place values. Oh, yeah. Compare. Seven hundreds. Three ones. Four hundreds. Four tenths. Oh, what is this? <clears throat> the value of 8 is, uh, yeah, it's 10 times. In which number does the digit 8 have values? 1 times. 1 10 times is greater as the 8. Mm -hmm. What? Number. Are we supposed to have uh, um, eight in the ones place? In which number does a digit seven have a value that's ten times greater than seven? Oh, it's going to be point nine, not point seven. Point seven. List the grades. 2.9. 2 2.5 seconds. In order to list the grades. List 2.6. 3 1 6. Uh, list 1 6 8. 6 2 6 8. Least the greatest. 24 tenths, so 2.4. 2 and 3 tenths, so 2.3. Wow, it's amazing. 
2.3, and 2.4. Now let's go. Which of the following are less than 0 0.2? Just two answers. 0 0.2. This one's 0 0.18. 0.10. Okay, order the following from least to greatest. Uh, since, oh, since least 0.39. Not that zero six. Two the following are greater than 1.97. Oh, it's even yeah. greater than 1.97. Uh, 27 tenths. And seven test is two points. It's a lot of videos, holy crap. Dude, the videos on this section are insane. How long are we recording? Who are so? We are told the square below represents one hole, so this big square here represents a hole. Express the shaded area as both a fraction and a decimal. So let's see, we've taken the hole and we've divided it into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal sections. Each of these columns or each of these tall rectangles represent one tenth of the whole because there are 10 equal sections that it has been split into. So each of these is a tenth. And let's see, we have filled in one, two, three, four, five, six of those tenths. So if I wanted to represent six it as a tenths. fraction, I would say this six is six tenths. And if I were to represent it as a decimal, I would say, okay, well, zero I have six. zero ones and I have six tenths. So as a decimal, it is 0 0.6. Let's do a couple more of these examples. Uh, let's say, so okay, oh look at that. Now I have, let's see, the big square represents one whole, express the shade area as both a fraction and a decimal. So what's going on over here? So I have 10 rows, and in each row I have 10 squares. So 10 times 10, I'm gonna, this has 100 squares in it. So I've divided Hundreds. my whole into 100 equal sections. So each of these little squares is one hundredth. So here I have shaded in one, two, three, four, five out five of over the hundred hundredths. Or I could say five hundredths, hundredths, five hundredths five. right over here. So as a fraction, I could write this as five hundredths. And as a decimal, I could say, oh, I have no ones, I have no tenths, and I have five hundredths. Let's do a couple more examples of this. So let's say that I want to, let's see, it says express the location of the point on the number line as both a fraction and a decimal. All right, so let's think about it. So this is two tenths, this is three tenths. And you see the zero tenths, one tenth, uh, or this is zero, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. And before each, or between each tenth, They've split it into 10 equal sections. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So each of these, each of these little hash marks represent 1 hundredth. So one way you could view this is we're at 2 tenths. So we have 2 tenths, and then we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hundredths. So we could view this point as 2 tenths and 7 hundredths. So actually, let me write it as a decimal first. So we have two tenths, and we have seven hundredths. Now another way to think about this is we have 27 hundredths. You can count them. Remember, each of these is one hundredth. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27 hundredths. And most people, when they see this number, they won't say two tenths and seven hundredths. They'll just say 27 hundredths. Well, I'll how do you write 27 hundredths as a fraction? Well, it's 27 seven over hundredths. 27 over, over 100. Let's do, I don't know, let's, I'm kind of in the mood. Let's do one more of these. Yeah, me too. The big square represents one whole. Express the shaded area as both a fraction and a decimal. 
So we've already seen there's a hundred of these. The, the hole is split into a hundred small, equal smaller sections. So each of these small squares is a hundredth. And so how many hundredths do we have shaded in? So this is going to be 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 21 hundredths. So as a fraction, I'd write that as 21 hundredths. Now, you could, there's a couple of ways to think about it. If, you're, if we're familiar with it already, we'd say, OK, look, 2 tenths is the same thing as 20 hundredths. So it's going to be 2 tenths and 1 hundredth, or 21 hundredths. Another way to think about it is this first row right over here, that's a tenth. Then this next one is a tenth. So you have 2 tenths, and then you have a hundredth over here. So any way you want to think about it, this is 21 hundredths, or 2 tenths and 1 hundredth. Let's see if we can write 0 0.15 as a fraction. So the important thing here is to look at where what place 100. these digits are in. So this one right over here, this is in the tenths place. So it's, you could view that as 1 times 1 tenth. This 5 right over here is in the hundredths place. So you could view that as 5 times 1 over 100. So if I were to rewrite this, I can rewrite this as a sum of this one represents 1 times 1 tenth, so that will literally be 1 tenth, plus, and this 5 represents 5 times 1 hundredths, so it would be plus 5 hundredths, plus 5 hundredths. And if we want to add them up, we want to find a common denominator. The common denominator is 100, both 10 and the, the least common multiple, uh, both 100 is a, a multiple of both 10 and 100, so we can rewrite this as Something over 100 plus something over 100 plus something over 100. This isn't going to change. This was already 5 over 100. If we multiply the denominator here by 10, that's what we did. We multiplied it by 10. Then we're going to have to multiply this numerator by 10. And so this is the same thing as 10 over 100. And now we're ready to add. This is the same thing as 10 plus 5 is 15 over 100. And you could have done that a little bit quicker just by inspecting this. You would say, look, my smallest place right over here is in the hundredths place. Instead of calling this 1 tenth, I could call this literally 10 hundredths. Or I could say this whole thing is 15 hundredths. 15 hundredths. And now if I want to reduce this to lowest terms, we can, let's see, both the numerator and the denominator is divisible by 5. So let's divide them both by 5. And so the numerator, 15 divided by 5, is 3. The denominator, 100 divided by 5, is 20. And that's about as simplified as we can get. Divide them both. Okay. Both by 5. So and so the numerator, 15 divided by 5, simplified. is 3. Wow. The denominator, 100 divided by 5, is 20. And that's about as simplified as we can get. The denominator is divisible by 5 to lowest terms. I could say this whole thing is 15 hundredths. 15 hundredths. And now if I want to reduce this to lowest terms, let's write 0 0.8 as a fraction. So 0 0.8, the 8 right over here is in the tenths place. It is the tenths place. So eight. you could read this as over 8 ten. tenths. And we can write that literally as being equal to 8 tenths, or 8 over 10. And now we've already written it as a fraction. And if we want, we can simplify this down. Both 8 Four and tenths. 10 share common factors. They're both divisible by 2. Yeah. So let's divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Right we're not changing the value of the fraction because we're dividing by both the numerator and the denominator by the same, same thing. Value, yeah. 8 divided by 2 is 4. four 10 divided by five. 2 is 5. And we're done. 8 or 0 0.8 is the same thing as 8 tenths, which is the same thing as 4 fifths. Cool. Let's see if we can write 0 0.36 as a fraction, as a fraction. There are several ways of doing it. The way I like to do it is to say, well, 0 0.36, this is the same thing as 36 hundredths. Or one way to think about it is, oh, shit, this some, is in the hundredths place. Hundredths. Hundredths place. This is in 
the tens Yo, place, the or you could view this as 30 oh, hundreds. You could view this as three tenths no. or 30 hundreds. So we could say that this is the same thing as 36 hundredths, or this is equal to 36 over 100. We've already expressed it as a fraction, but now we can actually simplify it because both 30. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. I'm a because. Okay. It's not a vehicle, but six. Yeah. Why would it seem like six? Six over a hundred. Start common factors. I don't know. Because both 36. Oh shit, for some. Six doesn't get to four. Four. I mean, they're both divisible like this. So let's say for some eighteen over fifty, and it's still divisible. No, I can do this by fours, right? So we get nine, and then ten about to twenty five. And 100 have some common factors. They are both divisible by, well, it looks like they're both divisible four. by 4. Yeah. So if we can divide the numerator by 4 and the denominator by 4, we get we're doing the same thing to both, so we're not changing the value of the fraction. 36 divided by 4 is 9. And then 100 divided by 4 is 25. And now these two characters don't seem to share any other common factors. And so we've written it, we've written it in simplified form. And we're done. Fraction Let's see if we can write the fraction 11 over 25, or we could call it 11 25ths, to see if we can write that as a decimal. And we're going to round it to the nearest thousands place. Oh, and so another way of viewing this, 11 over 25, this is the same thing as 11 divided by 25. So we can literally say, we can literally divide 25 into 11, and whatever we get, that is going to be the decimal representation of 11 25ths. And since we're going to go into the, the, in, into the places less than the ones place, we're going to go into the tenths place and the hundredths place and the thousandths place, let's add some zeros to this 11 right over here after the decimal. And now let's start to divide. 25 doesn't go into 1. 25 doesn't go into 11. 25 does go into 110. So when 25 goes into 110 four times, four times 25 is 100, so it goes into it four times. Let's keep the decimal up here, so we'll write 0 0.4. Four times 25 is 100, and now we can subtract. 110 minus 100 is 10. And now we can bring down another 0. 25 goes into 100 exactly four times. 4 times 25 is 100, and then you subtract and you get 0. So we actually didn't even have to round this one. This fraction is exactly, this is exactly 0 0.44. Write 7 eighths as a decimal. And so the main realization here is that 7 over 8 is the same thing as 7 divided by 7 divided by 8, which is the same thing as 7 divided by 8. These are all the same way of, or, or different ways of writing the same thing. So let's actually divide 8 into 7. And I'll do it down here just so I have some more real estate to work with. I'm going to divide 8 into 7. And I'm going to add a decimal point here, just because we know that this value is going to be less than 1. 7 eighths is less than 1. We're going to have, we're going to have some digits beyond or to the right of the decimal point. And let me put the decimal point right 75, up here, right above the decimal point in 7. And then we start dividing. And now this really turns into a long division problem. And we just have to make sure we keep track of the decimal sign. So 8 goes into, it doesn't go into 7 at all, but it does go into then we start at a decimal point here, just because we know that this value is going to be less than 1. 7 eighths is less than 1. We're going to have 
we're going to have some digits beyond or to the right of the decimal point. And let me put the decimal point right up here, right above the decimal point in 7. And then we start dividing. And now this really turns into a long division problem. And we just have to make sure we keep track of the decimal sign. So 8 goes into, it doesn't go into 7 at all, but it does go into 7t. So 8 goes into 7t. Eight, eight times, times. Eight times. So it goes into 7t. It goes into 7t eight times. Eight times eight Six. is 64. And then you subtract. 70 minus 64 is 6. Six. And then bring down another 0, because we still have a remainder. We want to get to the point that we have no remainders, assuming that this thing doesn't repeat forever. And then there's other ways we can deal with that. 8 goes into 60. Seven well, let's see, eight, it doesn't go into it eight times, because that's 64. 8 goes into 67 times. 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. 56. And then we subtract again. 60 minus 56 is 4. And now we can bring down another 0 right over here. And 8 goes into 40. Well, it goes into 40 five exactly times. 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. And, and we done. have nothing. We have nothing left over. And so we're done. 7 divided by 8, or 7 eighths is equal to 7 divided by 8, which is equal to 0.875. But I'll put a leading 0 here just so it makes it clear that there's that this is where the decimal is. 0 0.875. And we are done. Let's see if we can write 0 0.0727 as a fraction. Now let's Yo. just think about what places these are in. This is seven in the tenths place. And this is in the hundredths place. Hundredths. Hundredths place. This two is in the thousandths place. Thousandths. Ten place. And this but seven right here, this last seven, is in the ten thousandths place. Ten thousandths. Over. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. The way I like to think of this, this term right over here is in the 10,000th place. We can view this whole thing right over here as 727 ten thousandths, because this is the smallest term, the, the smallest place right over here. So let's just rewrite it. This is equal to 727 over 10,000. Over 10,000. And we've already written it as a fraction. And I think that's about as simplified as we can get. This number up here is not divisible by 2. It's not divisible by 5. In fact, it's not divisible by 3, which means it would be divisible by 6 or 9. It doesn't even look to seem to be divisible by 7. It might be a prime number. But I think we are done. Let's see if we can write 12.98 as a mixed number. So the first thing you might want to realize here is that this is the exact same thing as 12 plus 0 0.98. And this simplifies it, because then we just have to write it as 12 and some fraction that's the same thing as 0 0.98. So if we can write 0 0.98 as a fraction, then we can, we're essentially we're almost done. So let's see if we can do that. So this 9 right over here is in the tenths place. I'll just write it like that, tenths place. And this right over here is in the hundredths place. It's in the hundredths place. So you could view 0 0.98 two different ways. You could view it as 9 tenths, 9 tenths, that's this part right over here, 9 tenths plus, plus 8 hundredths, plus 8 hundredths. And if you want to find a common denominator, that would be the same thing as 90 over 100 plus 8 over 100 plus 8 over 100, which is equal to 98 over 100. Equal to 98 over 100. And so 9, 0 0.98 is 98 hundredths. And another way you could have said that is, look, this space right over here is in the hundredths place. And so this is 98 hundredths, or 98 hundredths. So you could have skipped this right over here. So if we just wanted to write it as a mixed number, we could just write it as 12, 12, and instead of 0 0.98, 12 and 98 hundreds. Now, we haven't l reduced this to lowest terms yet. So let's see if we can simplify this. 98 is divisible by 2 and so is 100. So let's divide both of them by 2. They have that common factor. So we divide both of them by 2. And so this is the same thing as 12 and 98 okay. divided by 2 is 49. 100 divided by 2 is 50. 
And I think that's about as far as we can do. 49's factors, it's divisible by 7, but 50 isn't. So we've put it in lowest terms. So 12.98 can be written as a mixed number 12 and 49 50 Dick, what's if I pick the quiz first? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Drag the cards to create the number that matches this room. Then place. Then, uh, twenty is the nearest number. Order the following vowels from the least to greatest. Five tenths. Zero nine tenths. Without using our calculator, convert the follow uh the fraction to a decimal. Okay, three divided four. Uh those uh forty seven times. Eight, two, five, six, five. Yes. Order from list of greatest. Put the lowest. Uh, it's really the lowest. 0 0.7, 0 0.9. The square below represents one. Word. Express the shade of their scope fraction. In this motion, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0 0.6 and 6. Expense. So Wow, oh, it's pretty insane. It's a lot of numbers. Five, one, five, five, uh, four, four. Uh, four. Five, eight times, and uh, four, e. Four, one, zero. It's going to be 8,000, 18.88, 18.88, it has a mixed number, 7, uh, 7, 1. Which point is at 3.944 on the number? 3.924. Four to C. Then the nearest hundred. Oh, so it's going to be the same shit. Three point four four. Uh, hundred. Uh, oh shit. The point is a thousand. Okay. Feeling the the value of three in. Uh, is. The value of three is ten times the value. Next. Whoa. Okay. That's pretty quick. I didn't have to do all of this with that book. Hmm. But I feel like doing it again anyway.
One, two, three, four, five, five, six. What is this? Yo, what is this? That's three for three. So we have less than the fraction to decimal. Which decimal is equivalent to 13? No, wait, what is R? 13. What? Yo, what's that? What? 
on top of this piece. What does this mean? Well, I don't get it. What, what, what nails this question? Which decimal is it? What does this even mean? Which decimal is equivalent to 5, 6? Decimals driven to five over six. the hell is this question? I don't understand. If I select this, what happens? I have no idea what the fuck. What is this? One time, I think. Five. Three. Uh, six. Third. When? Four. I don't probably get this. Four divided by. One, one, ten, nine, nine, one point nine. This is four, five, 
Ai, que coitinho. Ai, que coitinho. This one. So fucking weird. I don't really get this question. This is the right answer, but what is this? Oh man, this is cute. What's up with that? In this video, we're going to introduce ourselves to the idea of adding decimals. And I encourage you as we work through these problems to keep pausing the video and seeing if you can think about it on your own before we work through it together. And we're going to build up slowly and in future videos, we're going to find out faster ways of doing it. But the way we're learning it in this video and the next few is to really make sure we understand what is happening. So let's say we wanted to add 0.1 to 0.8. Or you could say we're adding 1 tenth to 8 tenths. Pause this video and see if you can figure that out. 0.9. Well, there's a couple of ways to think about it. You could say, hey look, 0.1, that is 1 tenth. And 0.8, that is 8 tenths. And so if I have one of something and I add 8 more of that something, so I have 1 tenth and I'm going to add 8 more tenths, well, I'm going to end up with 9 of that something. In this case, we're talking about tenths. So that is going to be equal to 9 tenths. That's one way to think about it. Another way we could think about it visually. So let's say we take a whole and we were to divide it into tenths, which we have right over here. So if we say this whole square is a whole, we divide it into 10 equal sections. So each of these white bars you can view as a tenth. So we have 1 tenth. So let me. Fill that in. So one tenth, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. We have one tenth right over there. And to that we want to add eight tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so how many total tenths do I now have? Well, let's just count them up. We have this one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine. These are really saying the same thing. All of this together is going to be, let me do that a little neater, all of this together is going to be nine tenths. Now in either case, how do we write nine tenths in decimal form? Well, we go to the tenths place, which is one space on the right side of the decimal. We say, hey, we have nine tenths. This is the tenths space right over here. So that's just saying we have nine tenths. We have nine we have nine of these tenths right over here. So let's keep building. Let's try to do, let's do another example. So let's say that we, let me clear all of this out. So let's say that we want to add, do these with different colors. So let's say we want to add, I have trouble, my pen isn't working, let's see. Let's say we want to add. You know, what the hell? Is, oh, here we go. Let's say we want to add three tenths, and to that we want to add nine tenths. What is that going to be? Well, you could do use the same idea. If you say this is three tenths, and this is nine tenths plus nine tenths. If I have three of something and if I add nine of them, 
Well, that's going to be 12. 3 plus 9 is 12. So we could say this is going to be equal to 12 tenths. Now, this one might be a little bit counterintuitive. 12 tenths, what does that mean? Well, one way to think about it, this is 10 tenths, 10 tenths plus 2 tenths. And what are 10 tenths? Well, if I have 10 tenths, this right over here is one whole. So that is going to be 1. So we have 1 and 2 tenths. So how do we write 1 and 2 tenths? Well, we could write it as, in the ones place, we just write a 1. And then in the tenths place, we write our 2 tenths. So it's, you could say it's equal to 1.2, or you could say it's equal to 1 and 2 tenths, which is the same thing as 12 tenths. Now if we want to see that visually, let's get our diagram out again. So actually, I'm going to make, put two of these here. So one, and then a second one. And we want to add, so let's start with the 3 tenths. So let me color these in really fast. So use that light blue color. Yo, use the pink. So that oh, is pink. 1 tenth. This is 2 tenths. In the previous video, you so coloring them in really fast. And, and this is 3 tenths. And then to that, we're going to add 9 tenths. So to that, we're going to add 1, 2, 3. I'm not coloring them in fully. 4, you get the idea. 5. Almost there. Watching Six. I need to color faster. Seven. Seven. Eight. Nine. So there you have it. I have added nine tenths. You notice I've colored in nine. I've colored in yellow nine of the tenths. And before I had three of the tenths colored in. And when you add them all together, what happens? Well, the 3 tenths oh. plus the 7 tenths right over here, they made a whole. So this right over here is our 1. And then we also have another 2 tenths left over. And so this is where this is our 0 0.2, or 2 tenths. So it's going to be 1 plus 2 tenths, which is 1.2. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of how we think about adding decimals. And even though in the future we're going to figure out faster ways of doing it or mis more systematic ways of doing it, this is still the way that, that I still do it in my head. If someone walks up to me on the street and says, hey, add 0 0.3 to 0 0.9. That's how I think about it. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing that stuff. Let's get some practice adding numbers that involve hundreds. So pause this video and see if you can add these two numbers. See what you get. All right, now let's work through this together. Now there's many different ways to add decimals. And you'll learn more systematic, faster ways of doing it in the future. But I'll show you the, the, a few ways that my brain might think about it. So one way to think about it is you could say that this is 53 hundredths. You could read this as either 5 tenths and 3 hundredths. Or 53 hundredths. So you could say this is 53 hundredths. Hundredths. And to that, you're going to add 42 hundredths. 42 hundredths. And so if I have 53 of something, and I'm going to add 42 of that same something to it, what am I going to get? Well, what's 53 plus 42? Well, in my head, I say, well, 50 plus 40 is 90, and 3 plus 2 is 5. So it's going to be 95 hundredths. 95 hundredths. And if I wanted to write that as a pure number, I would write that as 0 0.95, which I could read as 95 hundredths, hundredths, or 9 tenths and 5 hundredths. Now, the other way we could have thought about it is we could have broken these numbers up. We could have said that this first number is 5 tenths plus 3 hundredths, hundredths. And then the second number we could have rewritten as. 4 tenths plus 2 hundredths. Let me make sure my decimals. Plus 2 hundredths. And then we could have separately added the tenths and the hundredths. So you have 5 tenths plus 4 tenths. 
So 5 tenths plus 4 tenths. And then you could separately add 3 hundredths plus 2 hundredths. So 3 hundredths, I have a little trouble saying that, plus 2 hundredths. And so what do I get? Well, 5 tenths and 4 tenths, and we've done this in previous videos. If I have 5 of something and I add 4 of it, that's going to be 9 tenths. So it's going to be 9 tenths. And then the 3 hundredths plus 2 hundredths, well, that's going to be 5 hundredths. So plus 0 0.05. And then 9 tenths plus 5 hundredths is going to be, I know I'm saying hundredths kind of strange, is going to be 9 tenths and 5 hundredths, which you could also say as 95 hundredths. Let's do another example, one that's a little bit more involved. So let's say I want to add 68 hundredths to 33 hundredths. What is this going to be? And like always, pause the video and see if you can figure it out on your own. Well, there's a couple of ways to think about it. One way we could split up the tenths and the hundredths. Actually, let's do it that way. So if we, we could rewrite this first number as six tenths plus eight hundredths. And the second number we could write as three tenths plus three hundredths. Let me do that in that orange color. So three tenths plus three plus three tenths plus three hundredths. And so if I add the so if I add the six tenths and the three tenths, so let me just do that. I'm gonna write every step here. If you're doing this in your head, or if you're doing this on paper, you wouldn't necessarily write every step here. So those are the tenths. And then separately I'm gonna add the hundredths. So plus eight hundredths plus three hundredths plus three hundredths. So six tenths plus three tenths. We've done this in previous videos. That's hopefully pretty straightforward by this point. If it's not, I encourage you to review some of those earlier videos. So that's going to be nine tenths. If I have six of something and then I add three of them, in this case we're talking about tenths, I'm gonna get nine of them, so nine tenths. Yep. And so what's this going to be? Well, you could view this as eight hundredths, eight hundredths plus three hundredths. So if I have eight of something and I add three of something, that's gonna get 11 of that something, 11 hundredths. So how do we write 11 hundredths as a decimal? Well, one way to write it, you could just view this as 0 0.11. This is 11 hundredths. Many people would read this as 11 hundredths. Or you could view this as equaling 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths plus one hundredth, hundredth. And 10 hundredths right over here is one tenth. So you could view this as one tenth and one hundredth. So one tenth and one hundredth. And when you add everything together, what do you get? Well, you get nine tenths plus one tenth plus one hundredth. Well, now this is going to get interesting still. So let's see. Let me re actually rewrite this. So it's going to be nine tenths. And this one, let me write it plus again. one tenth plus that one hundredth left over. So plus that one hundredth. So what is this going to be? So nine tenths, nine tenths and one tenth, that's going to be nine tenths and one tenth is going to be ten tenths. Ten tenths which is the same thing as one whole. So this is just going to be equal to one. So it's going to be one plus one hundredth. So it's going to be one and one hundredth. And we are done. As I keep mentioning in future videos, we're going to learn maybe faster ways of doing this, maybe ways that you might be able to do a little bit more automatically. But it's really important to think about what we just went here and how we were able to think, okay, 11 hundredths is the same thing as a tenth and a hundredth. And then taking that tenth and then adding it to the nine tenths that we already had, said, hey, that's a whole. And in the future, we're gonna be doing things like carrying with decimals, but this is essentially what is happening underneath conceptually. It's really important that you get a sense of that before you learn the faster methods.
That's true. Yo, I think I can finish this. Oh, okay. Not that. Let's see if we can add 9.087 to 15.31. And I encourage you to pause the video and try to do it on your own. I'm, I'm going to do it. So I'm assuming you have tried to do it on your own. And now let's see how we could actually tackle this. Now, one thing I want to point out, some of you all might have seen these numbers all lined up and immediately want to say, hey, 7 plus 1 is 8, and 8 plus 3 is 11, carry the 1, etc., etc. And if you did that you would be making yeah, a mistake because you see right over here these decimals. decimals aren't lined up here you if you did that you would be adding the seven thousandths to one hundredths you would be adding zero tenths to five ones you would be adding nine to one oh, tens man. or essentially this is a ten right over here so the places would be all mixed up so what you need to do is actually align the decimals so that your place values are aligned so what you want to do is you want to align things up. So we could write 9.087, and then we want to align the decimals. So let's align the decimal. This is what has to match up, and this is going to be 15.31. And this should hopefully make sense to you as well. This is 9 point something plus 15 point something. So it's going to be, if you add a 9 to 15, you get it'll be 24 point something, give or take a little bit. So and you see that here, that here you have a 9 plus the 15. So you've lined up the appropriate place values. And now we are ready, we are ready to add. It's a good idea to start with the smallest place value. So if you have any extra in a certain place, you can bring into some you can bring something into the next place value. So here you say seven plus well I don't this is seven thousandths, it's in the thousandths place. Extra in a certain to add. It's a good idea to start with the smallest place value. So if you have any extra in a certain place, you can bring into some you can bring something into the next place value. So here you say seven plus well I don't this is seven thousandths, it's in the thousandths place. And you might want to you say, well, what do I add it to? I don't, this is you could bring something into the next place value. So here you say seven plus well I don't this is seven thousandths, it's in the thousandths place. And you might want to, you say, well, what do I add it to? There's no thousandths right over here. And you're right, there are no thousandths, so we could literally write zero thousandths. So seven thousandths plus zero thousandths is seven thousandths. Eight hundredths plus one hundredth is nine hundredth. Zero plus zero tenths plus three tenths is three tenths. We got our decimal. And then you have nine ones plus five ones is that fourteen ones. Well, 14 ones is the same thing as four ones and one ten. So we'll carry that one right over there. This is just one ten plus four ones is 14. And so then finally you have one ten plus another ten is two. So we get 24.397. That's funny. We're asked to add 0 0.822 to 5.65. So let me rewrite this. So and let me when I rewrite it, I want to line up the decimals so that we add the right place to the right place. And so we could write either Six number first, or I like to write the larger number first. So let's write 5.65. And remember, the important thing is that we line up the decimal points. So if we if we write 0 0.822, so yeah, we line up the decimal. Let me line up the decimal first. I'll write the decimal right below the other decimal. And it is 0 0.822. And now we are ready to add. We are ready to add. So let's see what's going on here. So I like to start in the smallest place. That way the carrying works out well. So you might say, wait, I need to add this two thousandths to something. I don't see anything up here. Well, you could say there's just a zero thousandths right up here, and then it makes it very clear. Well, zero thousandths plus two thousandths is going to be two thousandths. Five hundredths plus two hundredths is seven hundredths. Six tenths plus eight tenths is fourteen tenths. Well, fourteen tenths is the same thing as four tenths and one one. 
another way of thinking about it is you're carrying the one. But really what you're saying is, look, this is 14 tenths. I could write that as four tenths and a one. And the, or one's place, or one in a one's place. And then you have one plus five is six. And of course, you cannot forget the decimal. The decimal goes right there, and this is 6.472. We need to add 7.056 to 605.7 to 5.67. Now when you're adding any number, you always want to make sure you line up numbers in the same place. And especially when you're dealing with decimals, the easiest way to do that is to just line up the decimals. So let's do that. So this first number right here is 7.056. This second number right here is 605.7. So it's 605.7. And then this last number is 5.67. 5.67. So now we have everything lined up. Everything that's in the ones place is below or above everything else in the ones, ones place. Everything in the tenths place is below or above everything else in the tenths place. So on and so forth. So we can add. So let's add it. Let's add it. So you want to start off in the smallest place. So you start off here. This is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths place. This is literally six thousandths. And you want to add it to the other thousandths. There aren't any other thousandths. So you can, you can view it two ways. You could just bring this six down. Or you could view this 605.7 as the same thing as 605.700. Zero, zero. You, you can add as many zeros to the right of this decimal, to the right of the 7 as you want, since we're sitting on the right side of the decimal without changing its value. You can also do it here, this 5.67. You could write it as 5.67. Zero. And when you write it like this, and you have 6 plus 0 plus 0 is 6. And you keep going. 5 plus 0 plus 7 is 12. Is 12. You write the 2 in the hundredths place and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 7 is 8. Plus 6 is 14. Write the 4, regroup the 1 into the 1's place. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 5 is 18. This is 18. Carry or regroup the 1. 1 plus 0 is just 1, is just 1. And then finally, you have the 6 in the hundreds place. Nothing gets added to it. So you can just bring down that 6, and it's right there. And you don't want to forget the decimal. And so when you add the numbers, you get 618. 0.426 or 618 and 426 thousandths. And we're done. There are fields assigned to how to learn how to add decimals without being shown how to do it first. The problems go from easier to more difficult, and along the way, there are examples of this kind of hard to find good stuff. Learn the most if you look at the time you can get as chances to learn. Let's start by adding two things together. Adding two things plus one. And four numbers of points. Oh shit, one more. Okay, four. Sixty. What? Sixty-five. Oh shit, it's hard. Okay, I don't want to support the 6, 9, uh, 5, 4, 8. Uh, excellent. I got our, our problems with the book numbers of 1 and 10. So, let's see what we're going to do. Uh, 8, 9, 10. Uh, what for? Uh, uh, one. Rocking, let's move on to the hundreds. Uh, point nine. Uh, one. One? Oh shit. This is one. 
one point oh my gosh, it's still up. Oh shit, it's still up. Oh, it's still up. One, fifteen, eleven. Yeah. Yo, what? Oh, shit. Sweet, now we're at twelve hundred. That's my phone numbers. Oh, shit, man. Four, six point one seven. Uh, sixteen point uh, thirty uh, eight one. What? It's eight and nine. Yo, 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 what? Seven and nine. Uh, Two so five and nine point seven uh six you weren't challenging problems. Uh, five, six, seven, seven point seven five. Yeah. Five, two, seven. Oh, one, six, seven. Thirteen. Ten, seven. Point two. Do some more exam. Almost not. Okay, I'm back. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sh I made a mistake the last one. Okay. Two. Uh, oh, it's uh, one point. Okay, so uh, it's going to be. Uh, eleven. Yo, what? Oh, shit, eleven. Why do I? I keep getting confusing that four eight seven. I hit it.
See this one again. Why did I find signal for you? Oh my god. Oh man, sucks. Seven and four ain't that number. Add that number now. Makes me want to kill myself. See, I keep on fucking up 11, the 7 plus 4 plus 8. And 7 plus 4. Uh, 9 plus 6. 9 plus 7 plus 4. 13 plus 4. Yo, this is insane. Uh, 42, what point? Uh, 6, 7, 9. Uh, and 1 point. Uh, 8, and 0, 8, 6. Oh man, it sucks. Yo, yo, yo. Oh shit! 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 Stream. Fifty four. The sixth is sixty point eight. Uh, eight point five seven five. The point uh, uh two. Um, three uh. 13, 3, 6, 8, 6, 6. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, 3, uh, 13, right? And then 5? Yo, what? It's 35. <sighs> Nine, 
out of 27, 10, 3, 9, 8. So 3, 3, and 4, 9, 48. We have 2, we have 10. So 3, 7, and 4. So 2, 10, 2, 24, so 2, 32. So 1, 6, and 9, 1, then we have here 5, 3, 3, 1, 4, 9, uh, 6, 6 plus 9, I don't know, Number one, six, three, uh, eight, or three, or nine. Oh, fuck, let me see the last one. Everybody. It's because it's plus eight to three. It's plus eight to three, man. The same shit, I made a mistake on the very last one. I'll pull it again. Okay. Mm. Four. Four, twelve, eight, eight. Mm. Two, three, eight, seven. Two, five, Nine seven twelve six uh nine three five eight thirty and we have five two Okay, I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna end it at uh, add decimals and then tomorrow I'm gonna continue to finish this. So subtracting, adding and subtracting word problems, multiplying decimals and dividing. Oh, sure, it's quite a lot. I'm gonna finish the subtraction. So let's go. Yeah, I can do it tomorrow. Or I can do the subtracting now. Yeah, let's do the subtracting now. Do some more examples subtracting decimals. So let's say we want to figure out what two. Or tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. I think I'm kind of sleepy right now. But the yeah, you are sleeping. Yeah, let's do it tomorrow. So we'll finish adding decimals and then. This where I left off. Okay, let's see. Yo, yeah. There we go. Then. Nice listener. Nice. Nice. So there we go. So we have seventy percent. 6% algebra, automations, world of math, 30 60%. I got 1% in three years. It's pretty cool. Gained 1% during three hours.
Oh, nuts. That must be insane. Okay. Guess I'm gonna be good tomorrow and finish. Yeah, the decimal second. Okay. Thanks. Bye.